Hi everyone and welcome back to the University of Guelph Arboretum. My name is Michelle and I'm the summer naturalist here at the Arboretum and I'm back in Victoria Woods for another weekly Wednesday video and today we're going to be talking all about soil. So what is soil? Soil is the combination of organic matter like decomposing plants and animals, minerals, gases, and water. And there's layers to soil. So the top layer, called top soil, is often what you walk on. This uh, layer of soil is often darker because it's very rich in organic materials. And it's, uh, if you were to plant your garden, you plant your garden usually in the top soil. It's uh, more porous, it allows for more pockets of gas in the soil. And if we work our way down, there's subsoil. And this layer is usually a bit lighter than the topsoil, and that's because it has less organic matter. And it's also usually more compressed. And if we go another layer deeper, there's fragmented rock. And this layer is composed of, well, larger chunks of rocks. And it's often the parent material to soil. And if we go even one layer deeper, that's bedrock. And that's more of a solid foundation of rock that lies beneath all of the soil. And how is soil formed? So it basically takes a very long time. So it starts off with rocks weathering away. So if you think of a big old rock, over time that rock can weather away into smaller particles. And the way that happens can be through a few different mechanisms. So water is something that can weather away rocks. Over time, if you think of water hitting a rock through because it's raining over time, that can break down the rock into smaller particles. Or if you think of a rock sitting on the side of a stream and the water flowing against that rock over many, many years, it can weather down that rock into smaller particles. Something else like air can break down rocks. So over time, if a rock's sitting in a very windy place, the wind can actually weather away rocks and temperature can weather rocks down. So after many seasons of freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, rocks can break down into smaller particles. But that's not what soil is by itself. It's not just little chunks of rocks. It's also a lot of organic matter. So if you think of all of these leaves when the seasons change and the trees drop their leaves onto the ground, that's a lot of organic matter. Other things like other decomposing plants or animals, along with animal droppings, uh, can be worked into those little chunks of rocks to make soil. And the way that organic matter breaks down, it can take a long time, but it's often aided by things like bacteria and fungi will help break down organic matter into smaller particles. And a lot of soil invertebrates work to break down so uh, organic matter into smaller particles. So that organic matter, along with the small rock particles, mixed together along with water and gases, and that's basically what soil is. But soil is very variable. There's a lot of different compositions of soil, and one really cool way you can find out what your soil is composed of is by doing this really neat hand feel test. So let's try that out. Alrighty, so I've changed up the camera position a little bit just to be closer to the ground to the closer to the soil that I'm sampling and this field hand test what it really does is it allows you to get a better sense of the texture of your soil and knowing what kind of texture your soil has can actually tell you what it's made up of what uh, composition does your soil have so the first thing I've done to run this test is I've dug a little hole behind me and from that hole I gathered a little a uh, sample of soil, just about a handful's worth. And what I'm going to do with this soil is I'm going to first just take a visual look at what I see in the soil. So my soil, it doesn't have too many big chunks of uh, organic matter, and that's because I've dug down. So there's no leaves or mulch or anything like that. There actually seems to be a little worm in here. So this is just one example. It's very much covered in dirt, but there's a little worm here. This is just one example of one of the soil invertebrates that call soil their home. So I look at my soil and I, I can't really tell too much about it. I don't see any big chunks of gravel. It doesn't look like there's a lot of organic matter. If there were, I would simply pick it out because we don't need any chunks of uh, rocks or leaves or any little sticks in there for this test. So now that there isn't any big 
particles in my soil, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet it. I will warn you guys, this is a little bit of a messy test, but I think it's pretty cool. So I'm just going to give this soil a little splash of water. And I'm going to work that water into my soil, basically by squishing and molding my soil. And what I'm doing while I'm, while I'm compressing the soil in between my hands is I'm noticing the texture of it. So if it was really gritty, that would tell me that my soil maybe has a lot of sand in it. But this soil sample feels pretty smooth. After time, your soil should come together into a little ball and it should feel a whole lot like silly putty. And that's exactly what my soil is doing. Some soil might be a bit drier, so you might need a bit more water or you might need less water. Your soil might be really moist already by itself. But after a bit of time, your soil should come together into this nice little ball that feels a lot like putty. And now that I have a nice little sample of soil mixed in with water, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my index and my thumb and I'm going to press that little ball of soil through my index and my thumb to make a little ribbon. So I'll give that a go. So I'm just going to try to make a nice thin ribbon by pressing the soil in between my index and my thumb and we're going to see just how long of a ribbon I can make. So there we go. The ribbon broke off and it's about this long. So we'll give making another ribbon a go just to see if they're all that long. So again, I'm just going to press it so it's nice and thin in between my index and my thumb. And there we go. That's where it broke off. So this whole test, what you want to do is you want to find out how long of soil ribbons can you make. And the length of your soil ribbon tells you what your soil is made up of. So if your soil was really sandy, you probably would have found it difficult to even make a little ball of soil. And when you went to make a ribbon, maybe you couldn't make a ribbon that was very long at all. And if your soil was more composed of clay, I think my soil has more clay because I was able to make some pretty long ribbons. And so that's how I found out is because my ribbons were longer. That told me that my clay, my soil was made up of a lot of clay. And the composition of your soil actually matters for the plants that want to live in it. And a really good example of that is going to be a tree that I'm going to show you guys. So let's move on to our next spot to check out a tree that in the Arboretum actually required a little bit of help to grow because it requires certain things from its soil. Alrighty, so I've made my way over here to the Beech and Oak collection at the Arboretum because I think this is an awesome place to showcase how different plants require different things from the soil. And you can imagine, since the Arboretum is basically a museum of trees, you know, we have collections of native, endangered, and exotic trees. Not every tree that we have in our collections necessarily wants to grow in our soil. Especially when you think about trees from all around the world or all around Canada, um, not every tree wants to grow in the particular soil that we have here in Guelph. And that's because soil uh, can be so variable and really in large part due to the pear material it's made from. So if you remember back to when we were talking about the field hand soil test, how the minerals in the soil, if it's you know, mostly comprised of clay, silt, or sand, it can give it different texture. But those minerals can also give the soil different structures. So soil that's comprised of a lot of clay tends to be more dense, it has fewer pockets of air, and it tends to retain water a lot more then if we look at the mineral sand, that is quite the opposite. It's more aerated, it has more pockets of air, but it also retains water a lot less. And not only can these minerals change the texture and the structure of, of the soil, it can also influence the acidity of the soil. So if we think about the pH scale, where seven is neutral, higher than seven is basic, and lower than seven is acidic, the soil here in the Arboretum tends to be more basic because it sits on top of a limestone bedrock and that limestone bedrock makes our uh, soil a bit more basic. But the trees in this particular, uh, particular collection, the beech and the oak trees, they tend to want to have more slightly acidic soil and that's so they can absorb nutrients and minerals like iron. 
iron is really important for these trees without it it would make the leaves look a little bit yellow and the tree would be a bit more weak so to help these trees grow in our soil we've actually supplemented the soil with acidic uh, components like sand uh, to help the, the pH be what the tree needs it to be in order to take in nutrients. And that's one of the reasons why soil is so important. It's because it carries a lot of things that plants need in order to grow. You know, not only do trees use uh, soil to root themselves in place, but they also rely on soil to absorb water and nutrients uh, in order for them to grow. So I like to think of soil as kind of the unsung hero of our planet. Without it, our plants wouldn't really exist at all. They wouldn't have a place to absorb moisture and nutrients. And a lot of different animals would be out of a home. If we think of all of the soil invertebrates that live in the soil, soil is really a teeming uh, of life, really. It has a bunch of microorganisms, a bunch of invertebrates that call itself its home. If you also think of larger animals that might burrow in the soil, like groundhogs or bunnies, you know, a lot of animals, including ourselves, rely on soil for so many different things. But soil does have a problem and that's erosion. Erosion is basically the movement of the top layer, the top soil of soil, uh, away into water systems. And that can be due to wind or water pushing away the topsoil that's so rich in organic material off into bodies of water. And that can be really problematic because soil takes so long to make. Uh, it can take so, so many years for us to get to replace the topsoil that's lost with erosion. But luckily there is one thing that stops erosion and that's actually planting plants. So the roots, uh, when they take up homes in soil, not only do they, so the plant benefits themselves because they get a place uh, to structure themselves in and they get all the water and nutrients, but the soil actually benefits because the roots help keep the soil in its place and it helps minimize erosion. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning all about soil and I hope you'll join me next week for another video. Bye.